Right now it's 33 degrees and raining. Not the most fun to be outside. So what can I do with my time? Well, let's work in the garage. What a fun way to spend a day. Sometimes I work out here in the evenings as well, making homes for friends. I made another video where I talked about wanting to start building housing for our bird friends and our bee friends, and so now I'm trying to really get to it. And I thought I'd share some notes about what seems to be working well and some of the concepts behind these. One of my favorite parts about building these sorts of things is it's an opportunity to use wood that's just laying around the shop, kind of clean up, use scraps, etc. And you really don't have to build... I mean, I'm not trying to wow people over with the aesthetics of these. I just want them to be really functional and last a long time. And so here is a basic model for a mason bee home. I'm going to cut away to a shot of the past models that I've used that worked well enough. But the issue with them is the roofs weren't big enough and water would seep in, snow would land on them, and so I thought I'd upgrade the basic model and include roof metal. On Craigslist I was able to pick up for sixty dollars about twenty sheets of this old roof metal. It's dinged up, it has holes, it has some rust, not you know I'm not gonna build a home with it, but I can build probably four or five hundred birdhouses and mason bee homes with galvanized metal roofing on every one with huge eaves that should make them last an incredibly long time. I try to use black locust when I can, but this is a way to be able to use pine or whatever I've got and have it be something that's a little bit more protected. And you can see they've all got the same basic pattern of a big, big overhang on the front and then a droop on the side. Each of these mason bee homes are gonna be facing due south. And so that gives protection from driving winds and rain that come in predominantly from the west. Aha, little trick. You thought I just had it lopsided. Now these birdhouses aren't done just yet. They've been um, put together and assembled, but what I haven't done is committed to the size of the hole and the placement of the hole. So I build them based on the wood that I have, and then I cross-reference to common sizes. You can find these online and I basically will build something that'll be better for a house wren or better for an oak titmouse. I have no idea what the heck that is, but if the dimensions of the box are appropriate for that type of bird, that's what I'll do is I'll drill that out. And I've got a, a set of bits I bought online pretty inexpensively that uh, accommodate all the various sizes of most common birds. And the way these work I see a lot of birdhouses that don't seem to actually be meant to be managed. Uh, they're, they're, you know, all screwed down. You can't really get in there. You have to open the top to clean them out. And so what I do is I put a screw on the face plate. And what I'll do is drill a hole and put a stainless steel nail through that keeps it from swinging open. But even without that, it stays pretty well shut. And this way, I never have to take the birdhouse down. I can go up to them without any tools open it up and fully expose what's going on without disturbing whatever nest is in there. So if there are eggs or if birds are in there, uh, I won't be disturbing or destroying it. And then I can very easily clean everything out and then simply close it back up again. And you notice, really simple design there. You notice that with all of them, well this is a weird example, let me show one that makes more sense. With all of them, Again, it'll look like I have no skills as a carpenter, which is true, but <laughs> I make them so that there's always a gap at the top. Birds, the houses need good ventilation, so that if water does get in, they can dry out, and so ventilation at the top. Birds can always pack stuff in if they don't want that much draft, and then at the bottom, ample opening that the birds can also fill in if they want, but um, allows for really good drainage. It's like here's one with a black walnut face with a nice gap underneath. And I can always put an extra board in there if it feels like it's too big. But again, there's the idea that you can open them up. So this way, once they're installed, they never have to be taken down and they can be managed. I can walk around the property without any tools and be able to clean them all out and renovate them. So 
it's a lot of fun building this kind of stuff. It's a great activity for a rainy day and um, evening time work to really make a lot of great housing for some good, important friends that really deserve comfortable life. And here's a whole bunch of mason bee and native pollinator boxes that still I need to go collect bamboo reeds and tubes and pack them in there and get metal roof on them. But that's a lot of housing for a day of cold rain. I almost forgot, a really nice side bonus with doing all this work is all the offcuts and even all the sawdust that I vacuum up or sweep up will be converted into charcoal uh, in our wood stove. So the remnants turn into biochar and heat our home. So a lot of good reasons to be building these sorts of things. That's me some happy little beings.